I'm Leo Phillips, host of This Must Be The Gig. We're a weekly podcast that documents everything about the world of live music. Speaking with choreographers, costume and set designers, the people who run beloved venues and festivals, and, of course, speaking with musicians about that one gig that changed their lives. Get your peek behind the curtain at consequenceofsound.net, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's an audio interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, before we get started, if you're not already a subscriber, uh, I do hope you hit that subscribe button. You can do it in so many places. Really, if you're hearing this, uh, there is a subscribe button in front of you. But that also includes iTunes and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. So we do put out uh, th- at least three interviews a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We'd love to keep you up to date on all of those. I'm Kyle Mayer. Today, I'm talking with the band The Boxmasters. That's Billy Bob Thornton and his writing partner, J.D. Andrew. They just released their eighth record called Spec. And I emphasize eight because this is eight albums in 12 years. And while producing music that quickly could, could cause a record to fall through the cracks, uh, the guys will tell us that this one is especially poignant to them because it was produced by Jeff Emmerich from the Beatles camp. Uh, he was an engineer with the Beatles from Revolver On, and it was the last record that he produced before he passed away. Beyond the Beatles, we're also going to talk about the, uh, the parallels of the 1960s and our present day, how that works into their music and their lyrics. There's tackling a lot of big issues on this record. But while the songs can be heavy, they're also really fun. They're new sounds that they're using, like the ukulele and the tuba. One of my favorite songs on here features a tuba. We're going to hear about that as well. And how their upcoming tour is hitting uh, some really interesting spots, including Kent, Ohio and Flint, Michigan. Kent, Ohio has a, an unfortunate place in history with the Kent State shootings immortalized in the uh, CSNY song, Ohio. And, of course, uh, Flint, Michigan in the news recently with their, uh, with their water catastrophe. That's on the fellas' minds, too, as they're about to hit the road. Heavy stuff, but a really fun interview. It's Kyle Meredith with Billy Bob Thornton and J.D. Andrew. The Boxmasters. Good morning, hey, how's it going? Hey, congratulations on this new Boxmasters record spec. This is sounding great. Oh, good, good. Glad you like it. Yeah, it's a pretty uh, special record to us because it was uh, produced by Jeff Emmerich, who was the Beatles engineer starting with Revolver all the way through the end of their career. And we'd known Jeff for quite a while, and, and uh, he'd always uh, been a fan of the band, of the Boxmasters. And he said, we'd really love to you know i'd love i'd love to get in there and mix a couple of your songs and so uh, we finally hooked that up uh you know everything worked out at the time and uh of course we were you know highly honored that a guy like that would uh be a fan of us to begin with and then, and then to want to you know do the record and once he mixed a couple of songs we said how about you just produce produce the record and uh he he was all for it and then unfortunately he passed away a few months after we made the record and uh, I, I think it was the last record he ever produced and uh so we're trying to you know keep his name out there you know uh because he was a you know great man and a legendary engineer and, and producer so uh it was a very big deal for us we, we had jeff in here you know uh, also not long before he passed and was gutted to hear that uh, yeah I, I know you know as the world, we're all fans of the Beatles in some ways, but uh, but Billy, I'd also heard that your first record was was actually a Beatles record with a "Hold Your Hand," so it really was special for you, right? Oh yeah, I mean, I I actually was I, I'm old enough to where I was I think I was eight years old. I actually saw the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan Show, and uh, the first record I ever bought with my own allowance or whatever it was. Uh, the single of uh, "When I Hold Your Hand" and uh, it, it changed my life like it did everybody back then. You know, it was uh, it was you know what drove me to do everything I did since uh, was seeing those guys and uh, hearing them. So to be able to be in a studio with the guy who was there with them was it was kind of chilling sometimes actually. There's um, a, a tie with your all's music a lot of time towards uh, the '60s and, and having that influence. It, it seems like a, a pertinent time to, you know, a lot of us are drawing kind of the parallels between the '60s and, and now. Uh, beyond the music, do you, do you find that, you know, with the popular culture, does that kind of influence the way? You know, um, I, I'm assuming so with with an album title like Spec and the way you've kind of explained that before. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, uh, I th- you know, right now the country is, you know, pretty divided. And, and I, I think uh, politics and social issues are on people's minds more than they have been in the past few decades, uh, more like it was in the 60s, you know. And uh, so I, th- I think you can really draw a parallel between now and then. And, uh, and you know, young people are out there again, you know, protesting and things like that. So uh, it, there is a real similarity. And, uh, and this record that, you know, spec, it, it even you know, normally we don't get particularly political. And, and you know, our political views aren't uh, – aren't radical on either side you know we're we're more you know sort of we call ourselves radical moderates <laughs> but uh but but we uh you know you, you look around you see what's going on and you and you really uh it, it seeps into what you're doing artistically you know i do like the way that that title kind of gets a flip in the song too because you know, in the idea of we're all specs in the universe there's also the line when the spec gets in your eye i mean that's taking it somewhere big to somewhere very very personal yeah. oh absolutely and uh yeah i'm glad you noticed that it's a, you know when you write something and somebody gets it it always feels so good because uh you know sometimes yeah I, well i think a lot of time audiences will listen to a song and they will if, if they if it's hooky like it has a hooky chorus or they like the beat or whatever it is people don't always pay attention to what it's actually about mm-hmm. you know and uh it's it's nice when when you hear people say, "Hey, I love I love that song, man. It really sounds good." And but you know I love this you know this verse that says whatever, and it really touched me. We talked to a guy earlier who works with the homeless, and he uh, loved the song on their uh, "Days Gone," which is a song inspired by homeless people in L.A. there in Westwood. That's a great one too. Uh, it may be part of the coincidences that we're talking about. Well, some of the coincidences that we're talking about here. So the Boxmasters are going to play July 18th in Lexington, right up the road from us here in Louisville. I think that's the closest you all have at the Manchester Music Hall. But that show is flanked by Kent, Ohio, and and Flint, Michigan. And I thought, you know, if you were really right. talking about interesting parallels between the 60s and now, and and what's going on socially, politically, that's an interesting run right there. Oh yeah. Absolutely, no doubt about it. You know, it's it's funny that you bring that up because I I didn't realize that. I, I did, you know, when you have a tour booked and you know you're going to be out there a long time and you're doing one show after the other, I wasn't aware that 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 uh, that Lexington was those were on either side of Lexington. Uh, that's really amazing. Eight albums in twelve years. I mean, that's especially like the old days. Is it a quick process for you all? I think it always, well, we're constantly recording. It's kind of our favorite place to be. And uh, um, every second that we have where we're not uh, either on tour or, you know, working on other projects, we're in a studio or we're on the phone talking about songs or um, meeting up to, you know, polish off something so that when we get to the studio, we have plenty to record. We have several other records finished that we've never had a chance to release or uh, just uh, the time hasn't been right for whatever they are. And so the great thing that we have is uh, the ability to always be recording and uh, and always creating because uh, that's, I don't you know, like Billy has said it in other interviews, interviews before, if he's yeah, not creating and uh, doing that, then, he, uh, then he's... Uh, you know, losing his mind. <laughs> so it helps keep saying it's what we love to do, and so we uh, we appreciate that we have the ability to keep doing it. It's amazing to hear you ha- have all these records still in the can. I-, I can't wait to hear those, and I love what you all are doing with Spec. And you know, I'll close up by pointing out another song with "Shut the Devil Up" because I don't know—is that a tuba? Because that's uh, you know, having that sound and then it going right into the horn of "Let the Bleeding Pray." I mean, you guys are doing such cool things with these songs. Yeah, that is a tuba, and uh, yeah, it was kind of cool to do a song with just guitar, vocal, and tuba. <laughs> That's not bad. So it, w- it would be a heck of a lot easier to tour if all of our songs were just guitar and tuba. Uh, <laughs> it's not easy to find a tuba player that you want to take live, though. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. A little difficult. <laughs> Well, guys, I certainly appreciate the time uh, on the phone here today. Uh, Billy, J.D., thank Thanks. you so much. Congratulations on this new Boxmaster Rexer spec, and we'll see you in Lexington. Yeah, we're looking forward to being in Kentucky because we haven't been. We played in Pikeville at one point, you know, 10 years ago. So this is our 
first real foray into uh, you know Kentucky. And so uh, we hope people come out so that we can come back. We'll see you then, guys. Excellent. Thank right. you. All Thanks right. a lot, bud. My thanks, Billy Bob Thornton, J.D. Andrew. The new album from the Boxmasters is called Spec, and it's out now. Hey, before we get out of here, don't forget, uh, subscribe to the series. If you're not already a subscriber, again, you can do that anywhere you get your favorite podcasts from, like iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, also YouTube. And please do give us a, a comment while you're there as well. Tell us where you're listening from or uh, what you enjoyed from the episode. And, and give it a rating as well. That's a huge help anytime you can give the series a rating. And after that, WFPK.org. That's where I do a show Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern, where you can also find some bonus episodes of this series. Consequenceofsound.net has your music and film news. You can also find me at Twitter at Kyle Meredith, Facebook slash Kyle Meredith. And that does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network.